Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. For today's video, we're going to be talking about two points of concern that have arisen during the first week of Johnny Depp's trial against the Sun for his libel claim. The first point of concern is Amber's allegedly new, horrific, and private allegation that no one in the public realm knows about. And secondly, the judge's decision to allow Amber to sit in on the trial before she gives her own testimony. So according to the Mirror UK, which admittedly is not the most reputable and reliable source, Amber Heard asks for a horrific new allegation to be heard in private. In the opening arguments presented by lawyers for NGN, it was revealed that Heard has raised one new allegation that has not previously been made public. The statements on behalf of the defendants explain the actress has asked for the allegation to be heard in private due to its horrific nature. An allegation which has never been raised before, nor made anywhere in the last four years since the story has been blasted across publication after publication, including in any of the many court depositions and other documents produced in the litigation which has been conducted since the breakdown of their relationship in 2016. Or for that matter, in any of the contemporaneous communications at all which passed between the couple or their friends. Nowhere. One thing I want to draw your attention to is the use of the word public. So these new allegations have not been made public, but that doesn't mean that Johnny's legal team and Johnny himself and the courts are not aware of this allegation. So there have been concerns voiced in the comment section of my previous video regarding this allegation and whether Amber will be allowed to adduce new evidence this late in the process. So of course, if the courts and Johnny's side already know about this allegation and have had a chance to respond to it, then technically it's not new evidence as far as the trial is concerned. And hopefully Johnny's side has already had enough time to address and rebut this new allegation. The wording from NGN's lawyers makes it really unclear whether Johnny's side is aware of this evidence or not. But because of the use of the word public, it can be assumed that the court and the opposing side have been made aware of this evidence in a private setting. This video is being made based on the assumption that the opposing party and the court have not yet been made aware of the evidence and that it is only being adduced or submitted as evidence late in the process. So the question is, can previously undisclosed evidence be submitted and relied upon after the commencement of a trial? Late evidence always has the potential to pose problems at trial. There is no binary yes or no answer to the question of can late evidence be adduced? It's always going to depend on the case and it will always be decided on a case by case basis. In the UK, which is where this trial is being run, the civil procedure rules and common law make it clear that the overarching objective of the court is to ensure that proceedings are run as efficiently and as fairly as possible. According to Judge Cotter from the case of Moore and Plymouth Hospital's trust, a last minute scramble is exactly what the detailed, the careful orders of the court were designed to avoid. Now I just mentioned that efficiency and fairness are the main objective of courts. These two requirements can often be at odds. Fairness may dictate that previously unavailable or undisclosed evidence that is relevant and that has high probative value should be allowed into court, whereas efficiency would usually dictate otherwise since allowing late evidence can cause delays. These delays are most often caused by the court's need to inspect this evidence and determine whether it is admissible or not, and the need for the other party to appropriately respond and if necessary, rebut this evidence. So the general rule is if new evidence becomes available, it should be filed and served as soon as possible. If evidence has only become available after the period of time stipulated by the court during which evidence must be exchanged, then it is not technically late evidence since it didn't exist during the discovery process. So what are the factors that are taken into consideration by the courts when deciding whether to allow late or new evidence? Firstly, 
Is there a good reason for the delay? Did the evidence exist at an earlier time and could it have been submitted at an earlier time? Now, this question depends on when the party that proposes to rely on this evidence became aware of it and was in possession of it. So in NGN and Amber's case, when did Amber share this allegation with NGN? And were NGN in possession of this new allegation during the discovery period? The second consideration is how late in the timeline is the evidence proposed to be adduced? Is it a reasonable amount of time before the trial begins? Or as in Johnny's case right now, has the trial already begun? And finally, will the new evidence cause considerable prejudice to the opposing party? We've talked about this when discussing fairness and efficiency. Does the opposing party have enough time to respond to this evidence? Especially if, as in this case, it's a major allegation that is so allegedly horrific that it definitely warrants time for Johnny's side to be able to respond to it. Now, these considerations exist in order to prevent a party to a matter, such as NGN or Amber Heard, from deliberately holding on to evidence until the last minute to give themselves a tactical advantage. And the courts are very well aware of this tactic. It's one of the oldest tricks in the book. So what is the likely outcome in this case? Again, bear in mind, this is all under the assumption that this evidence has not been disclosed to anyone, not Johnny, not his legal team or the court. Unless NGN have an incredibly good reason for hanging on to this evidence until the last minute, I really don't see how the evidence will be allowed into trial this late in the game. And the only good reason I can think of is the fact that NGN may not have been made aware of this allegation until the last minute. So that means Amber would have had to hold on to this evidence on purpose and only share it with NGN once the trial began. The allegation would have undoubtedly taken place during Amber and Johnny's relationship. So it's not something that has recently transpired and that Amber couldn't have shared when Johnny first filed this claim in 2018. If the court finds that this deliberate withholding of evidence was a tactical move on NGN's part, then it is extremely unlikely for this evidence to be allowed into court. If NGN is blameless and Amber herself withheld this evidence and shared it with them at the last minute, it does become a little bit more complicated, but you would hope that the judge would see right through that and say, well, clearly you've held on to this evidence until the last minute on purpose. Why did you not share it with the defendants prior to the commencement of the trial? And then again, it would most likely not be admitted. Honestly, this is purely a personal opinion of mine. I don't see it as far-fetched for Amber to have withheld this evidence on purpose in order to take Johnny by surprise because I learned something else since this trial began. Amber typed up an unsent email addressed to Johnny in 2013 in which she describes him as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. She says, I just don't think I can do this anymore. Half of you I love madly, the other half scares me. The problem is I never really know which one I'm dealing with until it's too late. The drinking assures me I'm dealing with the abused, scared, insecure, violent little boy. I just can't tell where the line starts. Also, drugs seem to guarantee that I will have to deal with the monster again. Sometimes the hangover the morning after is just as bad as the full-on disco bloodbath I've come to expect. So Johnny was read out this email while he was testifying, and this was his response to Amber's lawyer. From hearing you read out this email that was not sent to me, and from some of the information I have garnered from my experience yesterday and having studied the case, I will suggest, ma'am, that it appears to me that Miss Heard was building a dossier very early on that appears to be an insurance policy for later. So Johnny's alleging that Amber's been scheming the entire thing as early as 2013. And what strongly supports his allegation is the fact that she drafted this email and never sent it. So it's like she knew that she would one day have to rely on this email to back up her allegations. In any case, Amber wants this new allegation to be heard in private because it's so horrific that she doesn't want it to be made public. So whether we're ever going to find out what this allegation is, I honestly have no idea. Certain things can be requested to remain private or under seal 
or redacted. Whether the judge will grant her request to have this allegation be heard in private remains to be seen. The other point to discuss is Amber sitting in on the trial. In my previous video, there have been a lot of concerns voiced in the comment section about this. And Johnny himself has protested her presence when this trial began earlier this week. But the judge did deny Johnny's request and allowed Amber to sit in. Now, defamation is a civil matter. So this is a civil trial. In criminal trials, witnesses are always kept outside of the courtroom until it is their turn to give their evidence, and then they are allowed to sit in. In civil cases, specifically in England, that is not the case. In civil and family matters, it is up to the court to decide whether to exclude a witness from sitting in on a trial before they present their own evidence. The courts are usually reluctant to keep witnesses out, and will only do so if there is a good reason. So that's the relevant test. Is there a good reason to exclude the witness. Cases have demonstrated that this threshold is not a high one, so the reason doesn't have to be a very cogent one. If a court is sitting in public, no one who wishes to be present should be excluded, not even a witness, without some good reason for doing so. Now the judge has his own reasons for this. He stated that since the defendants are relying on her heavily as a source of their evidence and their argument, then they had the right to have her sit in in order to assist them if possible. And I think that was the main reason why the judge decided to let her sit in while Johnny testified. You are well within your rights to disagree with the judge. I'm not saying he was correct in doing so. Personally, I disagree with his decision. I believe simply for fairness, she should have been left out because if she hears everything Johnny says beforehand, she has time to come up with counter arguments and to think about what to say in response to every single one of his allegations when it's her turn to testify. That's the entire reason witnesses are excluded in criminal trials, so that they don't hear what other witnesses have to say and to ensure that each witness's testimony is as untainted and uninfluenced by the testimony of others as possible. All right, that's it for this video. I am keeping track of this trial every single day. I try to read as many updates as possible to keep myself as updated as possible. As always, let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you're new to this channel and found this video informative, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and I will catch you in a future video.